I love cringe. I mean, it's probably obvious by this point. I mean, that's why I specifically asked my hairdresser to cut my bangs this short. Anyway, I've always loved scripted TV shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, but eventually that wasn't enough cringe for me, so I turned to reality TV like 90 Day Fiance, but then even that wasn't enough for my cringe fix because I'm not going to watch an entire hour of garbage TV just for like... 10 seconds of gold. So now I also enjoy and sometimes seek out pure undiluted real cringe from places like YouTube and TikTok. And COVID-19 has overwhelmed me with the cringy content I thought I wanted, uh, especially when it comes to people who hate wearing masks. Like who could have seen that coming? It's It's just a mask, it's not a big deal, but never put it past people to be extremely stupid about extremely stupid things. While that has been bad for the spread of COVID-19 through the United States, it's been great for cringe videos. Here's one that you've probably seen before. I have been working as an essential worker since this began. I have not worn a mask. This is the mask that I wore today to get in here. This is the if this is the mask that you say is okay to come in here. This is the mask I wore in here today. This is my homemade mask that your official said is okay to wear. This is insane. This is insane. Ma'am, thank you for your comments today. And I just on on at the end, I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't un- wear underwear. Things got to breathe. <laughs> yeah. And here's a slightly less colorful woman with similar concerns. We will get together and do a citizen's arrest on every single human being that goes against the freedom of choice, okay? You cannot mandate, you literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people. It literally is killing people. And all of this is just from one meeting in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. Thousands of people around the country are saying the same thing. Masks reduce your oxygen and cause harm. Here's the thing. Obviously, most people know that this isn't true. I would guess that even a lot of the people who are saying it know it's not true. We know it's not true for several reasons without even thinking about it for too long. For a start, we know that medical professionals wear masks all day long in strenuous environments and have been doing so since like the mid 19th century. If wearing masks caused such severe physical problems, we would know by now because there would be millions of doctors and nurses dying of oxygen deprivation after a 12 hour shift. We also know it's not true because we know that oxygen deprivation gets you high. I've known that since the seventh grade when my classmates started purposely hyperventilating to get a quick high. Give them a break, you know, weed was really difficult to come by back then. If wearing a mask got you high, then COVID-19 would never be able to gain a foothold in America's high schools because every student would be diligently wearing their mask and then sailing through their classes in a blissful haze. If wearing a mask restricted oxygen, erotic asphyxiation enthusiasts would be rejoicing over finding something to get off to that's way safer than choking each other with belts. So we know through common sense that masks don't significantly affect how much oxygen a person gets. But what about this lady's point? I've been a music teacher for 23 years. I need you to tell me how do I play a saxophone and sing with a mask on? I'll let you think about that. How about people that can't breathe with the myriad of conditions that there are? Not just one, not just two, maybe four, maybe five. Are there people out there who could be hurt by masks? Let me say up front that this should work like vaccines. Um, there are people out there who cannot get vaccines. Vaccines are dangerous to them because they're immunocompromised. But that doesn't mean that no one should get vaccines. It actually means the opposite. It means everyone who can get a vaccine should get a vaccine in order to protect those people who can't get vaccines. So if it's true that there are people out there who can't wear masks because it's dangerous, that means it's more important than ever for everyone else to wear all of the masks to protect everyone. But 
Are there people who can't wear masks because it's dangerous? Dr. Michael Campos is a pulmonologist. That's a doctor who specializes in the human respiratory system uh, at University of Miami Hospital. And he saw that video of his neighbors complaining about masks. So he decided to conduct a small study about how masks might affect your oxygen level. He and his colleagues recruited 15 people in their 60s and 70s with severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, all of whom had less than 50% lung function. The most common symptoms of COPD are shortness of breath, cough, wheezing, uh, and chest tightness. So these are the people that the Palm Beach complainers are talking about. Those 15 people were joined by 15 healthy volunteers in their 30s, not so much as a control group, but just to evaluate whether or not masks affected the oxygen levels of healthy people. Everyone wore surgical masks for 30 minutes, and then they went for a six-minute walk while still wearing the masks. The six-minute walk is a standard procedure that these doctors use to determine whether or not their COPD patients will need long-term oxygen. So this was considered uh, really like an observational study. This is what these patients were doing anyway. The subject's blood was then drawn and tested to see how much oxygen and carbon dioxide was in their system. The researchers found that the masks did not lead to a significant increase in CO2 in either group. There was an expected drop in oxygen from the COPD group, which is expected for their advanced condition, whether they're wearing masks or not. The researchers point out that ideally they would have had a control group of COPD patients who exercised without masks to precisely compare the O2 drop between patient groups. But with a pandemic on, it would be extremely unethical to allow these patients to walk around and interact with doctors without masks on. And that's the real takeaway here. Doctors agree that not only do masks not increase CO2 in patients with lung problems, but it's those patients who are most at risk from the virus because of their lung problems. And so they and the people around them all must wear masks at all times when in public. This was a small observational study without a proper control group, but remember that it matches our common sense observations. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and conversely, common sense claims like surgical masks don't significantly impact our oxygen intake can be supported with ordinary evidence. At this point, it's on the anti-maskers to pr present evidence for their extraordinary claim that masks are killing people left and right. I won't hold my breath. <laughs>